the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. Woo! Calm your feathers. Don't wet your diapers. Don't lose your new Alabama brothers and sisters. It's been a hell of an offseason already, right? Our legendary coach retired, but I think it's going to be all right. Now, there's some uh, rivals out there spastically and gleefully taking delight in what they consider Alabama's supposed demise, but we know, we all know, even they know, that that's not true because dictate the, the history dictates otherwise. And I think that this uh, transition from one legendary coach to another coaching staff might be a little more easier than it was with Bear Bryant. Let's talk about it. on our own like that old white snake song i like to reference periodically and here they come again on their own it's the outlaw posse now in effect and today's four horsemen shout outs go to alpha dragging gaming ftw squid water rich castle and sydney long are mounted up and saddled up and ready to go they're gonna help us today's college football invasion if you want your badge and you want to get deputized and get your random four horsemen shout out as well as possibly be the comment of the day and also, I might end up making another um, perk, and that is maybe give a 10-minute slot to um, a full horseman of the live stream. Y'all let me know what you think about that. Also, I can be found on X, a.k.a. Twitter, a.k.a. Rings of Saturn, whatever they're going to call it this week, at OCF Productions. Now, getting right to it. Um, seems like, uh, like I said in the lead-up, it seems like a lot of people are taking some delight. And even some fans right there are, are, are questioning Alabama's future, even the Alabama fans, because the legendary status of Nick Saban and him retiring, they think that we're going to, you know, maybe take a big drop in what we've been doing for the past 17 years under Nick Saban. But I don't think it's going to be as bad as people think or as, as wishful as people think. Because if you look at history of college football and to still an old adage, History tends to repeat itself. That's a great catchphrase to use in this situation because it, it does, especially in college football. In modern-day college football, which I consider 1907 with the advent of the forward pass, starting in 1907 with modern college football, Alabama has uh, periodically had dynasties throughout history of college football, 1920s, 1930s. Then we had a dip. Then come in Bear Bryant. And we had a small dip, had Gene Stallings, had another small dip, and then we had Nick Saban. And even the bad coaches I know, uh, during Alabama's um, history have all had, seems like, 10 win seasons outside of uh, Ears Whitworth. Alabama has continually had coaches that win 10 games. So to think that Alabama is going to go away just because Nick Saban has left, uh, y'all might be, I hate to traumatize you, but. I don't think it's going to be as, as, as epic as you think. Even Nick Saban said himself when they asked him about it that he didn't build Alabama. Alabama helped build him. Because like our little catchphrase says, this is where legends are made. And it's not us being cocky as some of y'all think. It's just a fact. Sometimes facts come across as being cocky. But it is a fact that we've had five different coaches win national championships at Alabama. There was four guys before Nick Saban that was able to win national titles here. Did they do it at a rate that Nick Saban did? No. Outside of Bear Bryant? No. And even Bear Bryant didn't really win it at the click rate that Nick Saban did. He, Nick Saban's only here 17 years. Bear Bryant was here 25 years. Both of them won six at Alabama. Nick Saban won seven overall. So he could probably be considered the best coach of all time if he had started his head coaching career earlier. Now, Bear Bryant, I think, started when he was in his early 30s. 
uh, Saban didn't start until his 40s, I think 42 years old, before he got his first head coaching job at Toledo or somewhere like that. But uh, another topic for another day. But the reason why I don't think Alabama's going anywhere, we may have a slight dip and have a season or two where we might go 9-3 and three or even 8-4, and four, but as far as disappearing and taking a, a completely disastrous dip like we did after Gene Stallings left and and periodically after Bear Bryant left, you know, Ray Perkins did have a five and six season in his second season, I think. See, the, the problem here and the reason why I don't think Alabama's going to have a hard, uh, it's hard a time of transitioning from one legendary coach to the next coaching staff this go around, like they did with Bear Bryant, is because Saban has left the program at its height. He didn't leave it in a shambles. He didn't leave it in a declined state like all, all, all these other legends seem to have done. Even Bear Bryant, I know his last year was 8-4, and four, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just tremendously bad, but it wasn't up to his standards. Even when Bear Bryant left, he was in bad health. He probably should have left two or three years prior, especially with his health conditions. And his recruiting had started to slip. The program was on a decline. Their in-state rival, Pat Dye and Auburn, was on – the incline. So that was another factor that was in place. Um, so with Alabama and Nick Saban, he left with a 12-2 and two record. And I had been preaching this all year, and people thought I was just trying to get rid of Saban because he lost a game to Texas, and I was overreacting. That wasn't it at all. I, I wanted Nick Saban to stay as long as he wasn't in a declining state. And I was always of the thought process, why not go out like the great Tom Osborne did in Nebraska? You know, he went out as a national champion. Why not go out somewhat on top? Sure, he didn't win the national title this year, but he went out with a team, won the SEC title, um, dethroned Georgia, who uh, David Pollock had famously with his infamous <laughs> spastic tirade that he made right there in front of Saban about Alabama being done. Alabama come back and ride the ship with a team that a lot of people didn't think was going to win more than eight or nine games after we lost to Texas and then completely looked out of sync against South Florida. A lot of people, including myself, thought we'd lose about three or four games. Saban ride the ship, took the team to the SEC title game, won that, beat the two-time defending national champions, and went on to the playoffs once again. And that's considered to me – is going out on top somewhat. Whereas with Florida State, Penn State, and teams like that, with Bobby Bowden and Joe Paterno, they waited, and Eddie Robinson, even at Grambling, they coached well into their late 70s, early 80s, and basically drove the program into the ground because they were unwilling to let go and realize that they were slipping. Bear Bryant, not Bear Bryant, but Nick Saban, I think realized that, hey, you know, I ain't got much time to be here. <laughs> and I'm in my 70s. I need to spend some quality time with my family. And while I didn't completely slip, I'm starting to slip just a little bit. So I'm not going to taint my legacy. I'm going to go out on top, and I'm going to leave the program in great shape for whoever else comes in here so it's not such a hard transition because I want my legacy and what I built here at Alabama to live on. And that's what he did. He done it the right way. He he retired. I know a lot of people were sad to see him go and thought he could stay maybe two or three more years at least. But he did it the right way. He went out on top. He didn't tame his legacy like Bowden and Paterno did. And now the next coaching staff that comes in here is going to be loaded. Sure, we might have some decommitments, but if you bring in a great coach with a big name right now, with the way this program's set up, they won't have to worry about rebuilding. Lots of times you get new coaches in like you did with Sarkeesian going to Texas, and that was because, you know, him going into that Blue Blood program, he had to rebuild that program. Nobody will have to come in here and rebuild. I mean, just look at the job Saban did at LSU. That's probably more of a, 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 more of a uh, great and impressive job, more so than Alabama in a way, because LSU had won national titles since the 1950s, and Saban put them back on the map. And he uh, put in place such a nice infrastructure that, <laughs> excuse me for saying, but Les Miles and Ed Orgeron 
two ass clowns were able to win national titles at LSU because he put such a great infrastructure in place in his four years four years there that it was uh, all he had to do was just try to follow the blueprint somewhat. And just think of how great of an infrastructure Alabama has with him being here 17 years as opposed to four with LSU. It's the blueprints here on how to succeed at Alabama. And another good thing, knock on wood, is Nick Saban doesn't look like he's in ill health and he won't be passing away anytime soon like Bear Bryant and Joe Paterno did. So he'll be around for a little while to try to, you know, see things for his success for hopefully. And he'll be around to advise that person. And he'll be around to check people that need to be checked that are unrealistic within the Alabama fan base and within uh, the booster setup that he had to put in check when he came in here. So in conclusion here, like I said before, calm your feathers, don't wet your diapers, don't lose your noodle, because Alabama's going to be fine. We're going to be great. We're going to miss Nick Saban, no doubt. No doubt we will miss Nick Saban. He's the greatest coach of all time. But we will continue on. Alabama's won national titles under five different coaches, and we will win a national championship under a six different coach eventually. Now let's talk somewhat about the candidates for the job here. Um, I got this a lot of this information from some sources here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. As you know, I'm not but a mile and a half from campus down here, so uh, I know a few people. And I also been paying attention to the Internet, and from what I'm seeing and hearing, uh, Dan Lanning supposedly was in Tuscaloosa last night. I don't know if that was true or not. Uh, of course, he's at the top of the board. Dan Lanning is, is uh, according to Bama 247 Sports, also Alabama is considering Steve Sarkeesian. I didn't know how um, realistic that was considering Texas has a lot of money, but according to a lot of sources out there, Sarkeesian's not really happy with the Texas boosters. They've been meddling like they continue to do. They ain't never going to learn, I guess. I uh, heard, heard that maybe they uh, uh, pressured him into making Arch Manning the second-string quarterback over Malik Murphy, although Malik Murphy came in and won a couple of games for Texas, and Sarkeesian wasn't too happy about being pressured to uh, push Arch Manning up to second string. Uh, so that could be a possibility, as well as Lane Kiffin, who have said that turned down the Auburn job with the thought process that maybe he would be up for the Alabama job and even put so in his contract, sort of like Dabo Swinney did, uh, back in the day with Clemson. So Lane Kiffin, of course, is on the board. Those are obvious candidates along with Dabo Sweeney and Mike Norvell of Florida State has also been mentioned as well as Mario Cristobal of Miami. But a guy on the outside outside the box thinking if, if there's some big-time boosters out there listening to this program, if the Pittsburgh Steelers let go of Mike Tomlin, I would definitely throw a boatload of money at Mike Tomlin. I think Mike Tomlin would be an excellent outside-the-box hire that nobody would see coming. And I think Mike Tomlin would be a natural fit as far as a recruiter goes. Now, I know some people say Mike Tomlin said he never coached college football. People say stuff like that all the time to try to get the media to leave him alone. So he may have meant it, but don't be, to, to, don't be so sure if he gets this kind of offer from such a prestigious university of blue blood as Alabama that Mike Tomlin wouldn't try to give it a go and do something different. And with that, I'm out of here. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Also, there's a little heart down here. If you want to make a one-time donation to the program, smash that heart, throw a few dollars in, in the donation barrel there. Also, as I said earlier before, you can join the Outlaw Posse for $2.99 a month, 75 cents a week, just a half a bottle of water for the Outlaw, and you'll get your random Four Horsemen shout-out, as well as possibly be the comment of the day. KMCA. All the other teams class is now officially dismissed.